They do have the Ursa Batrider combination. Very, very powerful. You combine that with Night Stalker to give you a lot of pressure in the early game. Just fantastic once you reach that minute four, and you're Dyer able to destroy pretty much anything that stands in your way. Of course, the silencer as well to give you that lane domination you seek together with the Batrider. So overall, STX8 is actually able to put a lot of a lot of pressure onto uh, SFT early, and then take advantage and get some kills with heroes like Ursa, Night Stalker, and Batrider. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Well, we'll see. We'll see what the last ban here is against SFT. I, I actually don't know what... I mean, I can only imagine they're missing a carry. Like, they're missing a carry. They have to be. Monkey King mid and then Doom in the off lane. I mean, look at STX8. They're just very confused as to what SFT is running to be in with. I wish that these guys had names. Let's see what they offer for that last pick, that last ban. Would you ban the mid laner, perhaps? The Necrophose ban? I guess it's a safe all-round pick. Ooh, interesting last pick for them, Enchantress. I know this team should have Lolico in it, but I, I apparently... like I don't know if that's actually their, their real names, as this is a relatively new team. I, SFT pretty well known. Um, that Enchantress pick, so position 3 Enchantress, I want to say... Oh, you know, position remaining. 2 Silencer? Yep, position 2 Silencer. Must be. Weaver. Is it a position five and champions? Weaver for SFT. Alright, this are very uh, this is a very odd draft. Very, very odd draft. Um let me just Or is position five, so that's position five. A G G well played is their position two. I mean, that is an Ursa carry, Batrider off lane, and Enchanter's mid. Huh. I was not expecting that. Whereas that Weaver carry makes sense. You have the the slaughter. Yeah. Okay. okay. I under, the SFT team. I understand their picks much more. Odd. Odd Enchanter's uh, mid lane. I wonder what are they expecting. Let's see if it works out for them. You know, I usually am not big a fan of presenting the players. I don't usually do that, but I think in this case it is proper just because this is a relatively... Well, this is a new team completely to the guy. It's going to be for... Let's start with SFT just out of out of love for them. Pexu is going to play in the Warlock in the support position. We're going to have Ilden as the carry weaver. Or, no, sorry, carry Ilden as the mid lane weaver with an off lane monk king to boot here, played by Mr. Thompson. And the second support position, STST with the Slardar. And of course, finally, in the carry position, interestingly enough, it's going to be Nikwa as the Doom. Usually, Ilden, I, I believe, plays for carry and Nikwa in the mid lane, but they swap positions, I'm assuming, just because they're more comfortable with these heroes. We'll see. Anyway, for the enemy team for STX8, the only known player here, Golden Star, known previously as Lolico. Well, known player. And the position 5, Sansa. That's his official name uh, as the position 4, Shisui, uh, as a Naruto fan, as the Ursa in the position 1K position. I love OKGG, OK, well played. As the Enchantress in the mid lane, and finally in the off lane, a Batrider, Nikaril. So even though it's his stand in on most of these guys, they shouldn't be any stand in as far as we're concerned. These guys are the official players for this team. And yeah, I was not wrong. It's going to be a Weaver in the mid lane with Nikola going bot. But they're going to leave him alone to run an offensive dual lane with a Monkey King. I actually kind of like that, you know? Offensive dual lane even turned into a trial lane, yep. I mean, you're up against a silencer who can put a lot of pressure, but Night Stalker is very weak to in a trial lane versus trial lane scenario until he gets him into floor. You leave a mid lane scenario, which it seems beneficial to the... And on top of that, you have a... 
a solo doom that can really just destroy this lane no matter who he's up against. Solo doom is pretty powerful, and even though batter should be able to stop him, frankly, once you get one level of scorched earth, then the firefly can't really catch you, and the batter really has to put a lot of weight behind it. Of course, the support rotations can also be a, a big, big factor here. That that um, untouchable is also not that powerful against a weaver either. It's odd. Uh, you'd pick, uh, you know, it's just the Gemini attack really makes Untouchable not seem that powerful. But I maybe you're gonna max Untouchable this game, or, or I don't know, because you don't max Enchant obviously if you're playing a carry and Tantris. I wonder if you max Nature's Attendance. It's not that powerful of a skill. But against Weaver, you have so much lane sustain to be honest. And oh, he missed the creep. <laughs> Did you notice how he's like, ah, I, he's at one point he's like, ah, screw it, I'll just try hitting it best I can, and he couldn't. He doesn't have enough damage. Enchantress is a pretty nice base attack damage, but look how much damage he takes from the Weaver with that really low armor. It's very Healing power. Now. Texu is going to try to find Golden Star here in the top lane. There's an Arcane Curse onto two, slowing them down, stopping the Slytherin Crush from happening. So like I said, this Trilem is just Trilem, not big... There's not a big difference right now. The Night Stalker's will be weaker a bit later once he reaches level 2 or so. When everyone, once everyone reaches level 2, Night Stalker becomes quite weak because he only has one skill for being level 2, whereas Warlock has two, and well, that's obviously explained. And I mean, the Monkey King can put a lot of pressure here. I don't know how, how good this is going to work for SFT, though, in general. I, I don't know. The the Enchantress Weaver matchup is beneficial to the Weaver once you get a couple levels, but at first it is going to be a bit hard for him. And it is uh, impressive. I think I love okay, GG well play is doing really well in this regard. Now, Bad Rider Doom is the one matchup that I, at first I kind of just shrugged off because I thought, oh, a couple levels of Scorched Earth, you're fine. But Nicaril, yeah, he can put a lot of pressure. Doom has a lot of HP, so he's okay with taking a lot of damage from the Firefly. As opposed to his low armor doesn't really hurt him against a Bat Rider with such a low base attack damage and mostly magical damage dealer. Which means that Nikwa is only screwed up because he is a melee hero. SFT2 take a first blood here in the top lane against Shisui. Force him against the trees. That ended up happening. On the mid lane. Oh no, we're seeing a bit of pinging here for Nice Stalker. They, they know that he's rotating. Might rotate to the mid lane. A well, Nikwa versus Nikaril. Uh, similar names, but not similar heroes. In this top lane, I'm, I'm surprised the Monkey King is winning by this much, to be honest. I mean, against the Ursa, uh, you might want to change and make the Ursa kind of position four. We see AG run it, and then they run the side, starts to position one, so you could get someone could let some last hits, because there's no last hits here on this lane. You just lost all of them to the Monkey King. Ursa just cannot get close to them. Usually, Ursa, I would expect him to beat the Monkey King, but not with the healing the Warlock provides, the slow as well. And the fact that Slithering Crush being comes with a slow, and with a... A stun is very, very detrimental to her. So look at that. First, the Slytherin Crush just pushes him away. And sure, Thompson can pretty much get the solo lane here. So it's not really a... Yeah, it's not really a carry doom as much as it is a, an off-lane solo doom, right? In the carry, in the safe lane. And then you have a carry Monkey King. Play by Thompson. Which makes sense because that way they didn't change the position. Alright, uh, SD, SD. Oh, careful. Golden Star silencing him. And uh, proceeding to attack him. Was STST. And he himself now will be going for a Tranquils. And oh, bottom lane. They want to kill Nikwa finally. It's already been a four, so it's time for Night Stalker to start doing stuff. And he's only level two. Not that big a deal. However, he might be able to kill the Doom. He, they can take, he can take advantage of Doom's low armor. He also has a void. A couple stacks of sticky napalm, and he becomes a huge threat of death. Night Stalker's being really patient here. Really patient. You want to get a couple stacks now. It should be a, they should be able to get him. The void, body blocking, scorched earth already used. Where's the void? Not used yet. Okay, they want to stop his TP. He does have one. They are pre preserving the void for that very reason. Look at that. Nikwa. They don't let him TP in from the battery, but battery will go down here against the tower. However, too many sticky napalm stacks. And sure, Nikwa does as well. And a flying Night Stalker does not go any faster as STST gets the kill. So that's going to be a great rotation by the Slaughter, ensuring it's a two-for-one trade. Tops in the top lane, now being harassed by Inursa. Monkey versus Bear. Even the Chinese Zodiac. There's no Bear because it just destroyed and ate the monkey. No. Peksu, just trying to try to TP away. One more overpower, gets it. No, one second off from actually... Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Able to get that in the end. 
unfortunate. He's still gonna run to this mid lane and try to find Thompson. Look at those furry sweat stacks going on. Oh, the primal, or sorry, that uh, primal balance strike. <laughs> I keep calling it primal strike. No, balance strike. He's still being called by. Okay, hit him. You have Jingo Master. You gotta heal Thompson. You gotta heal. And the Night Stalkers is gonna finish him off, and Golden Star as well. Too much pressure. I mean, he was just afraid of fighting against both of them. They, they, he did not have Balance Strike to heal up, and he played a bit too aggressively early. He got punished for it. Now, Golden Star Lolico is going to be chased down. And then, but Slaughter may be a bit too dangerous as he has to get healed up by the Warlock. The end. Another kill onto the Monkey King. Minute six. And let's look at how the lanes are doing. The Enchanters destroying this mid lane. Destroying this mid lane against the Weaver. Whereas the Ursa is losing his lane as well against the Monkey King, so it's it kind of evens out to be that. And the bottom lane, Nico versus Batrider, Nico is should be beating him in terms of net wards because of the Devour, but oh no, it's not actually. That's surprising. He has the difference in last should not be that considerable, but uh, it's only the Devour level one. Bonus Cold is not that big a deal, so it, it makes sense that yeah, it's not that important right now. Nico could have gone for a much greedier build, but he's had to go for Scorched Earth not to die, which I think is the right choice, because Scorched Earth does give you enough sustain to really stop the Batrider fire from being too effective. Oh, you already forced the time. DR. That's, that's okay. Look at all of OKGG okay, well played, though. He is... <laughs> I love this guy. That's the great name. Um, he is putting so much damage onto Odin, forcing time offs early. Shikuchi, he's lucky there's no sentry here in the mid lane, otherwise he could be in trouble. And now on the bottom lane, they find the Doom, they lasso him up, but he has so much HP, so tanky with that Scorched Earth. Tries to hold back up, he does have the Doom, might want to counterattack this as STST runs in the middle of that Firefly. Not too bothered by it, tries to get the Slithering Crush, but won't find it. Thompson now in the top lane, fighting against an Ursa, who's going to Furious Swipe him to death. Thompson now starting to get destroyed by Shisui's damage, who's starting to recover in this top lane. With his net ward, still you know, 500 away from the Monkey King, but getting a couple kills that are ensuring that that gap is closed. Well, in this mid lane, Illidan SDR. Oh, no, we're not gonna find anyone. Illidan. He's gonna Shikuchi up. I love OKGG okay, will blade. <laughs> Look at that, that untouchable. Makes Illidan unable to attack him. He almost gets the kill. Okay, and actually end up being a kill in the top lane against Shisui. That was, that was second where Illidan's like, guys, I just wanna attack him once and then tie him but I can't. That untouchable is so annoying. The Doom is available, by the way, so this bad rider has. And no, no issue there. All right. Well, let's see. SDST is Shisui gonna find him? They're not gonna put any more aggression. They have a couple of illusions for the silencer, but they're not using them to harass too much. Again, they're just trying to get that recovery and the Ursa somehow, which makes sense, honestly. You can't rely only on your enchanters. I wonder if she's gonna go for Dragon Lance, straight up four staff, or, or what's the idea? Hurricane Pike is just such a strong item on enchanters, <laughs> ridiculous. And then you combine Hurricane Pike with what maybe, maybe a the Agadim right after. Oh, she's with stunned out. So Dream Crush catches him just barely. He's slow for a bit. Air counter attack. He loses the end rate, but Jingu Master already activated and Rage is completely wasted. The upheaval starts to hurt Shisui as it slows him down, but Thompson, a uh, target of aggression as the void hits him just in time. I love okay, GG well played, comes in. And Illidan SDR joins his partner in the mid lane as he tries to ta attack Shisui and destroy him. They do find this poor enchanter so long. And how is he gonna survive this? Oh, a boundless strike that finishes off the Ursa who tried to hide the trees, but the monkey sees it all. One impetus plus the last word will ensure the kill for the silencer. Oh no. The Warlock actually saved him, thanks to that uh, la that Shadow Ward. And now, I love okay, GG will play, is being chased down. Illidan wants to get the auto attack, or at least the Shikuchi damage, but can't find him in the trees. The Firefly sees Illidan, he has no mana, they can last one, he tries to TP, but he doesn't have one in his possession anyway. They're gonna get that kill anyway. Meaning that that's gonna be a Weaver dying in exchange for an Ursa. Seems fair, actually even beneficial, I would say, to STX8. Really slight benefit, just because Monkey King did not die. They got, had gotten that kill against the Monkey King. 
as of the Shadow Lord. That's a really powerful, powerful skill. This is how you should play, you know, like, Warlock, the reason he's not played. Only CIS teams really play, uh, really play Russian. Really play Warlock nowadays. And it makes a lot of sense when you consider it. Uh -oh. oh, last one. Impetus, stun, the Petsu in the middle of Firefly, can't survive. And Nicarill with a haste rune can just run away. Not even concerned about the damage the Weaver's putting out or the Shadow Word. Right, the only reason, uh, Russians are mainly the, the guys, or CIS, mainly the guys that run the Warlock. Or mainly, predominantly, CIS team. And that's because they do put a lot of emphasis in the lanes. And they take a, a lot of aggression early game and a lot of rotations much more. If you watch Virtus.pro play compared to someone like Liquid, for example, you can see how much rotation they do in the early game. Even though Liquid is really good at winning the early game, it's a different style of play. So Warlock does benefit you a lot from putting all that early aggression, trying to win the lanes in a very, you know, a aggressive, a punishing aggression all the time way of playing. And in that way, Warlock is very good for these kind of engagements, you know. He's not particularly that great at 3 versus 3 engagements, though, and he's not good against some things, but he's fine when you run him in a dual lane with a Monkey King. Yeah, so, oh, it's gonna be Rod of Athos first for this Enchantress. Yes. You know what, I kind of like the Hurricane Plague more than the Rod of Athos. Even though I think Rod is fine, especially against the Weaver, I actually like it quite a lot. You don't stop a time lapse. The Monkey King can still, you know, stun you and whatnot within the Rod of Athos route. So it's not that great of a spell, or that great of an ability. And even though it does give you a lot of HP, Dragonlance also gets pretty sweet. They see him with the Amplified Damage, but they can't kill him. Toxic being healed up by the Shadow Ward. They're not gonna try to kill him. In fact, they're gonna go for an Ice Talker instead here. And he might lose his life. Oh. Goes nighttime, tries to run away, flies, but is unsuccessful. As you see, now chased down by the Weaver, has the one hit of swarm if he needs it. It's gonna just go down to the tower to get Shisui. No enrage on Shisui, takes the bug off, but the real bug is still harassing you from behind. Ends up. A soldier's fortune. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. In the bottom lane, while they fight, at the Doom, who has actually been silenced, so he can't use his Doom himself. Dyer's and that's going to ensure another kill off this Doom, and a bit more intelligence for the silencer, who's not benefiting it. Guy just gradu graduated from school. He's quite happy, you know, he got his small little degree that he's not stupid. Very, very proud of himself, you know. He's going to achieve great things, everyone says, but let's see if he can continue getting that intelligence or, or if he's going to end up taking drugs and dropping out of school and never doing anything with his life. Such a sad, sad poor kid. Anyway, STSD <laughs> here in the middle lane. Let's see if he can do something to defend this tower. Probably not really. The enchantress is going to take it. Oh! Tries to deny it, but fails. They could have punished that, honestly. That slaughter could have been much closer to that, especially with nighttime. But yeah. you know that Slaughter's going to try to deny at least if he, if he feels cocky. I mean, come on, it's European Dota. They're going to try to deny and do these amazing plays. They are very, it's a very individualistic kind of Dota. You see a Slaughter alone, he might really just be alone. You can't play like that. This sustains good remains. Now, in the top lane, STSD sees Shisu Shisui. Does he want to attack him? Amplify damage to Shisui. He's really perfectly fine. Five Betsu though. They hit him and they use the Warlock Ultimate. He's been silenced, but they can still get the kill with the Impetus. Now the Night Stalker trying to run away, but the Swarm will ensure this finishes off. Yeah, bye bye Night Stalker. That Swarm deals way too much damage. They even get a kill onto Golden Star as well. But Golden Star did get the extra intelligence out of it, so you know he is going to do great things this life. Bit smarter. Gold and sweet. Alright, here in the mid lane. They go for I love OKGG. Okay, GG. Well played. A lot of armor taken away from him. He can't survive a second Gemini attack, but he can survive thanks to the untouchable of any auto attacks happening. Ursa, no blink dagger, will not be able to make sushi out of the Slardar. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And the silencer pauses the game. Interesting. Golden Star. Done. He's like, <laughs> no, they have lag, obviously. So just a wee bit of lag, which SST, STX8. Rod of Atos is almost complete on this Enchantress. 15 minutes in. We'll see how effective that item is. He, it's interesting because he actually was running double Null Talisman, double Bracer, and he didn't even have the Bracers on him, which is odd. 
usually are not you're not used to seeing that because Enchantress does require a lot of strength early on in the game. That Rod of Atos will give him a huge strength boost. He has a five armor, which is also okay. That's why I kind of like the Dragon Lance a bit more because it does give you a bit more armor. Which I mean, Enchantress strength kit is terrible. Yes, one point three. Oh, it actually got improved. It used to be one point oh. But uh, it's all, she also has a pretty bad agility game. So she doesn't make, get that much armor anyway. So getting a bit extra armor from the Dragon Lance is also fantastic. I'm assuming she's still going to go for the Hurricane Pike into the Axe. Uh, it's also maybe a bit surprising that she didn't go for the Midas at all. Maybe it's a bit too greedy, though. I think with Hurricane Pike and Rodavate, there's too much set. So you want to get those four irons soon. Now Slaughter, he's been cooked up. The Flame Break to push him back. Impetus starts hitting and a look at Slaughter go down. More intelligence for Loligo. As he starts to really ramp up in terms of potential this game. He's actually been pl playing full position 5 as Nice Talker buys, well, at least has more items than he does because he has boots and urn, I suppose. Yeah, urn is really what makes the difference here. But I w at this point, I really would want to see Silence with the 4 stuff at the very least. You know, go for that 4 stuff early on. He's going to go for Tranquils, of course, then into 4 stuff Hurricane Pike. And just 4 stuff, just 2 Hurricane Pikes. You're able to defend the top, the high ground, very easily. And it's not like they have great high ground siege or great late game. It's okay. It's better than Ursa, but it's not that much better than an Enchantress and a Silencer. So, with double Hurricane Pike, you can really put a lot of pressure into Monkey King, for example. Or even a Weaver, just maybe being able to just send all these attacks onto him. Oh, Rod of Ato stops the Doom. Where are you going to go now? Where's the complete team? Yeah, the Silence of the Doom comes out. The silence is a bit too late, and of course that aggression has to stop. Great usage there of Nature's Attendance, but of course losing uh, that impetus damage means they can't really get the kill. Crip Here in the mid lane. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Ursa just cleaning up house a bit, trying to get that bling dagger as soon as he can. He is pretty far off in terms of this farm. We see Batrider. This Dyer's is the European Batrider. I suppose we're going to call attack. him that. This is Chinese Batrider and European Batrider. Going for the bling dagger straight up, trying to get that kill on Elden SDR before he gets the bling dagger or anything of the sort. No, the Rod of Atos with the sides. Prevents a time left. Can they kill him in time? No, Shikuchi either. And the Weaver rooted down and eaten right up. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Okay, now the slaughter gets killed off by TX8 quickly. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And Nicaril with a blind dagger. Oh, also the flaming lasso. No, nope, does not find the doom. Nico though. Let's see. You can still blink on him. I'm not entirely sure if he wants to commit this. Uh, he does have that lasso, and there's two people coming in joining him. There it is. Lasso. Stunned out, carries the Doom away, Impetus with Rod of Atos. There's no Doom on him this time, so Nikwa has no way to get out of this alive. They even use the Crippling Fear for safety purposes. Ensure those Scorched Earth. Oh, actually, he did use the Scorched Earth, so just wasted that. That's a pretty big deal, huh? The using the Scorched Earth so early. And that's when you come back, you don't have the Scorched Earth ready. It's a pretty Radiant's long cooldown spell. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Odin SDR. Bottom tower has fallen. Keeps attacking this tower, the top lane here too. As you sweep, to join in, but they have the last word onto him. Are you gonna time lapse? Yeah, you have to. You're forced to. Because once the last word is on you, I mean, they could have really punished that, calculated more or less where he was going. But it was really hard to do. Uh, of course, no What is up with the dire team name? SDX8. I mean, it's some. It's it's rush. I I don't know. I, I can't pronounce it. Are you asking me? Are you asking me how, how to pronounce their name? I didn't make it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's an odd name. I agree. But I'm assuming if you guys probably... Like, if you speak Russian, it doesn't seem that odd. It, it must mean something. It must mean something. Right, it's not just random letters. Well, maybe it is just random letters. Oh, we'll see. 
thought that would be just random letters. Echo Saber on the Monkey King. Now uh, finished up with a BKB coming up very soon as well. They're gonna find the Earth. He does enrage. He survived this global silence. They want to counter attack. That's the enrage onto Sisui. And he's surviving all this damage. In fact, now it's time for the matter to join in. Finds a slaughter. Stunned out. Where's the help of the nice talker? Great counter initiation with the column. Now it's Slytherin Crush. The boundless strike murders three in the face of the enemy. I love OKGG OK, will play once to fight against a whole team by himself. Tries to get the kill against Slaughter, but might have just sacrificed himself for absolutely nothing. That's two, four dead, with only Ursa surviving the initial. A soldier's fortune. The basher onto Shisui. They come very soon. And this so Sean starts to fall. SFT starts to put the pressure up. With an amplified damage ensuring uh, they can take this for Sean rather quickly. Where's the rest of the team? Oh, there's the Aegis. Taking on ill against DR. They can't defend this, honestly, when everyone is dead. And SFT when they start to take the advantage. Are you taking the rune from the enemy team? Yeah. Never steal, man. Did you not learn from Goldilocks and the three... And now, Aegis with the Fusal Blade from Illidan SDR. They're gonna go for a tower down in the bot lane. Try to put some pressure up finally in terms of towers. They've taken what? I mean, they've taken a lot, of tier, a lot in the top lane, but that's it. Nothing in the bottom lane. This is the most useless tier one tower, of course, but putting a bit of pressure here, just, you know, making sure that you can take tier two in the bottom lane, which is pretty important. It's a good idea. They have really good high ground defense, so the other towers are the primal target. They find the Doom. They want to eat him up. She's sweet. Do a lot of damage. Kills the Doom. Now the Global Silence. Can they follow this through? That BKB dispels it, and the Weaver still surviving through the Silence. Finds Shisui. He's almost dead. Southern Crush. There's the dead bear. And Thompson joins back into the fray. Destroys Golden Star with just two hits. Thompson. No Jingu Mastery for him just yet. And the batter is still fighting. A great run of Athos. They can kill the Monkey King. Elder SDR has the Aegis. Wants to lose it. So he can keep on fighting against this annoying Enchantress. Thompson cannot get his jingle mastery off and Nicarill can he TP in time the damage from the weaver is sufficient to finish him off it's gonna be STX8 losing three for three SFT can they survive oh no no night stalker is just gonna lose his life here STX8 is gonna end up losing night stalker here and with a weaver versus enchantress it's a 1v1 engagement the golem sacrifice before he dies where's the geminate attack this enchantress too low armor finally destroyed by illidan the only surviving matter is gonna get a triple kill now a quad oh no not not a quad because peksu really Peksu, don't steal the quad. Don't steal the quad kill. Whatever. They're gonna get four kills anyway. Now Illidan, with a timer still available, being harassed by the Ursa Shisui. Is this really your best choice? Niku joins in. The timer still available. And Enrage onto Shisui. Wasted completely as Niku gets the crit of death. And ensures that nobody from SDXA can mess with Illidan SDR. That's why he's called Illidan SDR, guys. Because he's strong. Anyway. I don't know what it stands for either. I know Wait, that's what that's what it stands for. Maybe it's a tribute to. Sh I don't know. I, I, I don't know what SDX8 stands for or what it means. Really. I, we, we know what it stands for. Really. You have the team names, obviously, because otherwise. Oh, what's this team SDX8? Ah, whatever. Just let him in the tournament. We need one more team. No, that would be sad. Anyway, <laughs> the Bat Rider getting a four staff. A golden thread. To his name.
exactly what I mean. Radiant scanning. <laughs> That's great. That is great. What a great team name. All right, I like it. I like it. I support that idea. Thank you, STX8. Creative team name should not be bad. I want, I want like that to be the team that wins the international. Just for the name. I want it to be like the international winners are. Take a photo like Zhao Eight. Like just one dude clapping because nobody else knew who these guys were, and just one guy like in the audience. Like, It's fucking, it's so fun. I, I find that hilarious. Anyway, that aside, let's get into the actual game. It's just, SFT start to take the lead and now are putting a lot of pressure in terms of ganks, right? You have a Monkey King to get the Doom and a Weaver. It's time for them to take a kill on the Enchanters. This is really valuable. The only really strong carry that uh, STX8 have. Look at that Boundless Strike. Enchanters literally lost her, like, most of her HP just from one Boundless Strike. And they commit a Wukong's Command, which I think was very appropriate, as the little statue should not... Um, I, I, I actually really like that he's using That's how the Enchanters always gets decimated so quickly. It's a we had a hard counter to the Enchanters, the, the Monkey King. People don't really think about it. She's so close to Hurricane Pike. That's why Hurricane Pike is much more important than Rod on the Enchanters when you're fighting against Monkey King. Because you can push him out of the, out of the circle, stop that ultimate, and of course push yourself out of the circle as well. So it's very important to do that. Rod seemed like a very hopeful dream. Like, guys, I think we're going to wait in the next couple minutes. And this team was like, sure, yeah, go for Rod of but Radiant's if you're... Tower is under attack. Not like... Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, Ilden. That's what his name is, Ilden. Aladdin. Nobody said Al Aladdin, man. <laughs> Very different pronunciations in English. Attack. Aladdin, not Ilden. Thank you. Ilden, SDR. Ilden, Ilden. So you just so you get that idea to your head. Solar Crest onto the Slaughter, by the way, is going to be his next item. I like more than Mobility Slaughter, to be honest, of course, uh, But I think it's a bit of an overkill to get Amplified Damage, Solar Crest, and then, and then it's a Swarm. But I guess, I mean, if you're committing to that physical damage strat anyway. Monkey King also benefits a lot from the physical armor. Is he going himself for Heaven's Hopper? Heaven's Hopper, I don't mind, actually, at all. He's really strong against the Ursa to stop the Enrage from being effective. Can be very good against the Enchantress, actually. It's uh, 5.5 sec or 5 seconds now, without being able to attack it. First thing down, people, you just become like a little, you know, like a like a creep user, like a chen in the middle of a. Of a Smoke, this time from STX8. Let's see if they can get. <laughs> Two guys clap. Also clapping. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, <laughs> Lincoln's on to the Weaver. It's gonna be the next item. All right, we're just we're just calling these items out for the winning team. Let's say I think they lead. So it, it's interesting to see how the optimization can affect for us. I think for us, it's a bit more important. But how does that Basher affect you? You can take the Weaver kills much easier, but the Weaver will still be kiting the Ursa thanks to the Diffusal Blade. I actually think it's very important to keep the Diffusal Blade charges up. So. Just to ensure that you have the Fusal Blade level 2 before you get that person, that uh, Lincoln's. I do think that Lincoln's mainly stop Crippling Fear and then Abyssal Blade. I guess last word to some degree is not bad that you stop that either. But you can also break the Lincoln super easily with Enchant. It is quite a long cast point for being such a terrible spell. It also stops Rod of Aethos. Actually, a lot of here spells. Anyway, that bad matter. He will set himself back up. But he's going to fall into a bunch of monkeys. And you know what happens? Oh, God. As the creator of Shin Chan would happen. This, this, this tasteful joke. Uh, SFT will be able to wreck this poor Bat Rider. Uh, Zillard and SDR continues to push this tower down. Now with the help of the Jingu Mastery, add some damage. But of course the tower has backdoor protection. They don't care about it. These guys, I mean, they see a shield and they think it just means they have to hit it harder. You know, it's like one of those games where you have to charge against the minions with shield or something. But these guys just hit harder until it breaks. Okay, then. Witcher? Maybe Witcher. Illidan anyway. SDR. Oh, found out. There's the Ursa. And the Valor Strike plus the Golem. Stops the initiation completely. Shisui might lose his life. The Star is just falling through. One last auto attack. Slithering Crush so close. SD, SD. He can't get the Slithering Crush. Flash hit bash. But oh, the Slithering Crush is able to come out and kill off this poor Ursa. Forcing immediately into a buyback. Which means that he's going to have to come back and try to fight. But with only one life. Of course, there the Doom died. But... 
Well, you know, that's all you lost, really. And he's still had a Doom available, which is the only unfortunate thing. Valor Strike stops the Bad Rider with Swarm to get vision on him. Yul Center trying to take that little Swarm away. It does not go away. That bug stays with you forever as Illidan gets that kill. Illidan being hit by Dust twice. But at the time, Lance can dispel both Dusts. Oh, that crippling fear right before the time lapse. Go, Illidan, survive this. No, Batman can take him down. And that's going to be four deaths for SFT. Only Monkey King surviving by jumping in the trees. STX8 is saying not over yet, even though you have a 50. Now they're going to start this. Uh, this one, Sean. Let's actually talk about the Enchantress pick. I don't think we've talked too much about it. What's the reasoning behind the Enchantress pick? Enchantress is pretty decent against Weaver due to your lack of physical or sorry, magical damage in general. You don't have much burst damage in any team. Actually quite good against everything they have. The sustained damage from Warlock, for example, or the low amount of damage from Slaughter in general since they're in Crush. It's not that big a deal. Uh, really helps the Enchantress. The Amplified damage is stopped by her Untouchable. I like the idea of Enchantress. I think I just think the Intimidation was a bad idea. You also offer a lot of burst damage for a team that is uh, probably looking for a mid-late, mid-game. The draft mid-late game. Nah, mid-game, really. Because you do have some nice uh, ways to take advantage of those kind of snowball picks and whatnot. There's a lot of reasons why the Enchantress was picked up here, but... It, it really isn't a bad pick as much as it seems. Uh, it's been doing pretty well. It's a very safe, also, mid lane pick. I guess it's not the most orthodox thing. Try to analyze why they picked it, because it's not the, the most common thing in the world. Anyway, SDSD, they find Night Stalker. They stun him out. Night Stalker, careful. And the Ursa finds SDSD with the silence. No, that's just Night Stalker committing suicide. With a Valorant Strike stopping the Ursa, running the tracks, and the Monkey King proceeds to attack him. The Weaver wants to join the prey. They're still at ultimate, but not using it just yet. As Shisui eats the cheese, forcing the cheese already out of him. Golden Star can have use Global Silence without the mana. As SDST finds the Ursa, he's gonna lose the cheese and the Aegis in this engagement at the very least. They go for Nicaril first, has no Aegis, so they can kill him once. Now they can kill the Ursa once again. And let's see if they can kill him twice as well. With those golems just joining in for no reason. That Ursa will lose his life. That was the Enchanted Golems, by the way. And with this, SFT can finally take a tower in the top lane, as they took one in the bottom lane as well. They're not considering the shrines, they're just going for those racks. SDSD, ooh, so close from killing the Enchantress. So close. She's also great at defending high ground, theoretically, but not with Odin joining in. Look at the BKB. Now nah, there's no more untouchable for you. The Enchantress cannot last against Illidan SDR. And now it's time for them to take the range racks as well. Oh. There's the Dust, Ilden, surviving for now. SDST, there's the Hurricane Pike, he's been silenced. Last word will trigger as well, so he's gonna go down. The Doom does find the Enchantress. Is the Doom with the Aghanims? No, it's not, so she still the Untouchable. With the Monkey King Ultimate, can they kill her in time? She runs out of the circle, hippity scop, and <laughs> skippity hop, as Nicaril with three stacks of Jingo Mastery on him, finally triggers on the Monkey King. The Enchanter's fighting with all her might, but she already wasted a buyback. She can't let this be a dieback. They took one set of racks, and they can't lose more. The Night Stalker stopped by the Infernal Blade. They want to kill Nikwa. At least get uh, some sort of counter kill. And the Ursa in the bottom lane fighting against the Warlock alone. But Illidan says, let's see if you fight against someone from your size. The Monkey joins the fray, and the Heaven's Hopper stops the Ursa from putting out any pain. It's gonna be the guys from SFT, yet again, putting the pressure against these racks, taking one set already, and they wanna take another one. The Rod of Atos, what does it do but stop the Monkey King for just a couple seconds, two seconds of nothing, as the Enchantress is lacking the damage. Golden Star will lose his life against the Weaver. He needs to use his BKV, but he doesn't have a time lapse just yet. He's gonna have to sacrifice himself to the gods of the Enchantress only for a kill on the Silencer. They do take two lanes of racks, though, as a result. It does seem like STX8 are against the ropes. It's round number four, and they're starting to get tired. Conor McGregor cannot last against Mayweather anymore in this matchup. And it's going to be the Ursa starting to get very tired, losing that net worth, falling behind. I want the dude to get back in the game. You can't find farm, you can't find kills, you can't defend the high ground with your enchantress being nullified. And the Enchantress, who now is going to go for a Lincoln to try to prevent the Doom from coming out. I can only imagine. Uh, to amplify damage, I guess it also stops. It's not bad.
Regeneration. And with this shadow work, oh, Pexu also helping out. Wait, did you go for the ancients? Why do you devour that ancient of all things? You devour the small one. Why did you go for the devour adds ancients? Okay, target ancients, which I think is the better option anyway, but why if you're not gonna get the big golem? He gives you life, dude. He makes you so tanky. Why keep the awful? I mean, I, I'm okay with keeping the awful wolf. It just doesn't seem coherent. You just grab that. So clearly you had some plan in mind. What are you looking for? I mean, the root, maybe? The more minus armor? Yes! Go for more minus armor! Take the Ancient Prowler Shaman! Oh, okay, no. It's not gonna go for more minus armor. That would've been too much. <laughs> that would've been too much. I like the Ancient Granite Golem, The aura is ridiculous. top shrine has fallen. Now, Nilden in the mid lane, putting a bit of pressure. Nobody found yet, though. As a slight darkness covers the air, now enveloping the night time, can SFT make the final strike? The strike that puts ST STX8. <laughs> it's an odd name to say. Finally, out of the first game of this tournament for the EU version. Can SFT claim the first win that will ensure that every other team in the tournament will fear them from now on? None of the primal victors of this amazing game. Or will it be... Will it be... SDX8 coming back in a miracle way. We're gonna see very shortly as in front of the gates of hell they stand. Without constant siege, much like Scipio and Zamia. Much like many generals before them just trying to take the tower over and over again, but not letting anyone come out. Even Pexus getting bored of this huge... And now Thompson starts to hit this tower. The siege continues. Nico gets the mute. Perfect against the Enchanters. That's the doom they wanted. The BKB. They gotta kill the Enchanters immediately. The golem is dropped. And the Earth is fighting versus four. How are you supposed to win this? You don't. The GG Will Played comes out. And STX8 will give up their five heroes and the game. SFT win the first match of this best of three. Ensuring they are one step closer to winning the first best.